30 years ago, a half a lifetime ago, I was approached by a philanthropist, Dove Wallowitz, to start an organization which I gave the name Get Free to help people who are having difficulties obtaining a get. And I'm happy to say that it's now 30 years later and I still have a phone number that rings to me, 718 New York City Get One, where I offer free help to people who are having difficulty with the get. So nobody can accuse me of, of being insensitive because in my time, I literally helped several tens of women who are having difficulties obtaining a get. However, at that time, as things proceeded, I realized that there was an increasing feminization of the system. There's a saying, the way things happen by the Gentiles has a profound effect on us. And therefore, as this started to be the push towards no-fault divorce, so things were happening in the Jewish community as well. So I, I, I want to just give a little bit of a background to this. Rabbeinu Tam in the Sefer Hayosha Hamiyuchas Rabbeinu Tam says as follows: A mushal, an allegory. God is like a tree trunk. Next to the tree trunk, there are only a few branches, relatively few branches. As you get further and further away from the tree trunk, there are many more branches. This means that in many institutions in Yiddishkeit, there are truly only relatively a minority who get things straight. Those are the things that are close to the tree trunk. They're not necessarily popular, but they get it straight. And then you go further and further out, and there's Vox Populi, what the masses think about. Now look, let's, let's face this. Do we have problems with kashras? Every so often there's big kashras cameras. Do we have problems with kids at risks? Do we have problems with people not getting into yeshivas? Do we have problems with any number of facets and aspects, sneers, crazy shakles, tight, tight clothing that our grandmothers would, would blanch if they would see the way their granddaughters are dressing. And I'm talking about how great the house We have major problems, okay? Why should somebody think that in the area of Jewish divorce, there it's beautiful, there are no problems. Why should people think that when it comes to what they did, there's no problems when the Talmud tells us that in Messianic times, one of the main reasons for Mishif Natam is going to be problems with what they did. When I had a young Dayan, who was a head of Bezdin, an up and coming fellow, we have our disagreements, but he's an improvement over some of the stuff that's going out there, but he's still, I believe, with the best of intentions, he doesn't have it right. And Avi Khan, Rabbi Avi Khan, got on my radio program and said, that he believes that there is, he, first of all, he said it on another program, he said he believes there's corruption in Bezins. he believes that Bezins don't put in enough time to try to make Shalom bias, he believes that the Toan thing, when you hire a lawyer to say all kinds of twisted things and teach the people to fight and everything else, it's a lot of shroom and drang, oh, tumble, 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 where everybody's getting rich and, 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 and doing the getting the Bezins ten or fifteen thousand dollars. And here's the big, here's the big kicker. Would you assume that if the population is 50% men and 50% women, sometimes the man should be right and sometimes the lady should be right? Let's say men are more Neanderthal than women. As Ronald Reagan once said, they're like cavemen, without the women be cavemen. Let's assume that's true. So 70% of the time, the women are right. But 30% of the time, the men might be right. So how come it is today that I could challenge what they did when was the last time you told the woman, I'm sorry, it doesn't rise, not only doesn't it rise to Chayim Lagash, you are obligated to give a get, but it doesn't even rise that we should send you or give you a letter. You know, they're not going to be Shalom Bayez, so they tried for six months, she tread water, because her advisors told her, you tread the water, then you come back to the bed and say, I still don't like him. And then they give a letter, the best thing is, they should split, such as that. What are you doing? There is now a pandemic of divorce. Ain't bias, Asha, ain't boy, mess. Messed up. There's no family in Claudia Yisrael that does not have relatives who are going through a divorce of all ages. They could be married for six weeks. They could be married for six years. They could be married for 36 years. I had seven kids, but I don't like them anymore. I used to like chocolate. Listen, let me tell you the story. I was 20 years old. I only went out with four people. I thought he was a nice guy. I was swept off my feet. 
Then when I marry him, I say like this. He's insensitive. He's absorbed in his work. He doesn't die for the kids. I don't like him. He's insensitive to me. He's mean. He doesn't know what the kids are enough. Are those reasons of Chaim Lakarsha? Guess what? Sorry, no. But what do you mean? So a fellow calls me up the other day. A very bright young man. He's around 30 years old. And he says to me, Bezal Hashem. Listen, the woman fell out of love with him. That's it. That's the, that's the way the 30... The, the 30 years, that's the way I think. They fell out of love. He says, if she fell out of love, you're supposed to stay. So I said, listen here. The difference between me and you is, I grew up, I was six years old when it turned 1960. So I still remember some of the 60s, 50s, and I very well remember the 60s. In the 60s, my mother, when she went shopping in the middle of the springtime, at the beginning of the 60s, she would put on white gloves. You hear what I'm telling you? The women would wear white gloves. The, there was a totally different attitude, and there was a different attitude of sneers. I'm telling you that in 1960, the average Gentile woman, I can promise you, dressed more modest than people making the 13th Avenue promenade with their fancy Prego strollers or whatever the brand is now. And they don't even realize. So how do you expect the 30-something to understand the sanctity of marriage? The 30-year-old grew up, and they have now fancy plastic plates that they use on Shabbos, and then they throw it out. Anything that they don't like is disposable. So marriage is like a business deal. If me and you invest in a house and we don't like it, what do we do, real estate? We split up and we go our separate ways. The attitude is the destigmatization of divorce. That, that respectfully, the heck with the children, a tremendous amount of narcissism and self-centered, it's a capital I. Now, Dr. Laura Schlesinger, who was on the radio 10 years ago, she was one of the top radio hosts. She, coming from a quasi-Gentile background, whatever it was, certainly not religious at all, she became, whatever her story is, she understood, you made a deal, you got married, you have kids now. Divorce is really a last option. The Gentiles, 30 years ago, in this country, the religious Gentiles started to see that there's an ever-increasing amount of divorce. And states started to do something called no-fault divorce. That means, I have no reason, I fell out of love, chocolate, vanilla, I don't like them today, I go in, we split the property, the, the doctor worked like a dog for everything, but we split the property, so there's every impetus for the woman, she does better financially when she has control of half the money. So, by the way, the last state Strangely enough, in the Union, only 10 or 15 years ago, or less, to make no-fault divorce was New York State. Before that, the Gentile society, 25 years ago, half the states are more understood. You don't just separate. There were whole divorce trials. You had to have divorce, constructive abandonment, adultery, this, that. It wasn't easy because the Gentile understood that you can't destroy families. Now, what the Gentile court system understood, the Besan doesn't seem to understand. You know what the Besan understands? The Besan understands like this. That the main people in Israel who do Gittin are the Rabbanut. The only other ones are Reb Nissen Karelis' Besan and maybe a few Yechidim, but that does one, two, three a year. So if somebody wants a get, they have to go through the Rabbanut. Now, the Rabbanut Dayanan in Israel make a fortune. They make, I was told, $10,000 a month. It's a peachy job. It's a tremendous job. Now, to get that job, you need political connections and everything else. Okay? Now, the way it works is the Begats, the Supreme Court of Israel, has a big impact on the Rabbanut and the Besan. They, they really know. Okay? In addition to that, the Knesset has the input. In addition to that, the feminist pressure. So the Rabbanut wants to get, get and get and get and get it done, get it done. Guys want to hold on to their jobs, etc., etc. So it's a rotten system. There are some good guy on it, there are some bad guy on it. The problem is in America, when somebody writes a get, they want to know that their get is going to be accepted by everybody, meaning the rabbi in Israel. What if they want to get to go to Israel? What if they want to get remarried in Israel and the get is not accepted? So therefore, there's a trickle-down effect, excuse me, there's a trickle-down effect, and the trickle-down effect is that we have to go according to the standards of the Rabbanut. So that means there's more of a feminization of the process here because of that. You know why? Now, there's another thing. Who gives the best in their business? A lady comes to a towing who's making $250, an hour, and they have reputations. She, she says, which best should I go to? 
They push the business to the Besson. If the Besson doesn't cooperate, the next time the towing won't go to him. The towing is getting paid to get this woman a divorce. So then the gears, right off the bat, there's something wrong. So this is a system. So you ask Rabbi Avi Khan. So Rabbi Avi Khan's Besson does not allow Toanim. Is there any concept in Shulchan Aruch even about Toanim? Listen, I'm not the world's halachic expert, but there is a concept that there are various people, various gedolim, and various points can we say at this point, certainly at this point, that the Hyanim system is so out of hand, it's so crazy, they're teaching them so much stuff, and it's breaking up families, come without your towing and do what you want. First of all, even without the towing, the women today call up these whole sisterhoods of people who are encouraging the kids. Oh, Mamali, you've been so you put upon. The lady looks at lists, the lady's like this. I was innocent, I didn't know, etc. He says, innocent, he was this, he said, it's that. But it's worse than that. I look at my friend, and I think my friend's husband is handsomer, he makes more money, he's kinder to the kids, he's not so grouchy, she's having a panacea, I'm not. The ladies think like that. And therefore, they really think that when they have four kids, and now they're divorced, they're going to get a Zivik Shaney. I mean, the men are just knocking down the doors to get married to them. That's why they're not getting fabisten and they're not all meeting and, 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 and having Shabbatonim and commiserating. And then, I'm sorry to say it, but subconsciously, when they hear that their friend is a little bit, instead of telling them, it's Gehenim, I was stupid, we should have worked harder on Shalom Bias in some of the cases. In some of the cases, they're men are whack jobs, there's no question about it. But not in such an overwhelming majority of cases, 95% of the initiators of Gitna, but they didn't call them kind of women. 95%, there's something wrong with the system. It's a feminism. So instead of telling the lady, don't do what I did, no, no, misery loves company. So let's make it ever increasing. So we have a major problem over here. Now, we have to understand something. What's wrong with the lady? I want to, I want to, I want to play devil's advocate. Here's a lady, she was a nice, sweet based Yaakov girl. Everything fantastic. She was a nice girl. She's a bite. She's sweet. She's able. She's basically from and everything else. And and Taka the guy has rough edges because like the stipler said years ago, a woman is not a roommate in the dormitory. It's not a shtemla, <coughs> etc., etc. And we don't get enough premarital counseling. The chibidi report should be obligated to get in depth how to deal husband and wife, each of them should have a three month course as far as I'm concerned. Where's Agudis Yisrael? Where's all the do good organizations to start to mandate this? Where are the Rabbonim to say we will not be Masab the Kedushin if there's not a, a, not a six hour course, it's not driving. You need a six hour course to, to get a license or for insurance purposes. But for this, where, where is the Seichel? Where's the Seichel on this? But, but, Gittin will go, everybody's doing it, will encourage, will encourage, will encourage. You know what this is doing to the, to, the, to the kids and to the families and everything else? You know, I want to tell you something else. You know how many avarices it's, it's costing? When a woman does not deserve a get and she gets a get and her husband is stuck and he's been violated financially because of the secular court system, okay? And, um, and he's been alienated from his kids and he doesn't have female companionship. What is he going to do? He's not. He's going to remain an angel. I want the ladies to know. Rabbeinu Yaina says that when a woman dresses not sneezing in any way and tight clothes that accentuate the body, I'm so, I'm sorry, but according to our religion, it's not sneezing. A lot of the clothes and shapelich, which you look better than the girl, the, the shapelich like this. Rebbe Yashiv says it's not das Yehuda. I'm sorry, Yehuda levels a kanoi, a mishigan, etc., etc. But that's our religion. If you don't like it, start your own religion. Call it high BGB, but it's not Yiddishkeit. So a lady goes ahead and she's walking in the street and she's not dressed sneezing. She attracts, she's eye candy, she attracts attention. Says Rabbi Nuyoyna, the same place in Gehenna that the man is going to go to, the woman's going to also land up there because she was a Goyrim. This is what it says, this is what Rabbi Nuyoyna says. The Chavaz Chaim speaks about it. What am I saying? I wonder what's going to happen after 120 years, the lady comes upstairs. And Chaim Yankel put out a shingle because he didn't want to be a fourth grade Rebbe. So he decided he's going to have a best. And so he puts out a shingle. And before you know it, he's popular because he's like a chiclet gum machine. He's pushing, he's, he's, he's making the gitten, making the gitten, etc., etc. And then after 120 years, Chaim, the best guy, and Susie, who got the get, come up to the Shemayim. And they say, you know what? You're going to go to Gehenna. And you know why? Because Moshe David. 
Chlesmas, where he did something he wasn't supposed to do. He was single for 10 years, and he did a virus. He did a virus. I'm not so sure that the Bezdin and the woman are not going to be held responsible to a certain extent. Because the Vilna Goyen says, Din v'cheshbin, Din is the Aveira, and Cheshbin is the ripple effect. And God makes a ripple effect. You're killing people, you're killing your kids, you're killing the etc., etc. So now let's get to the Halach of Gittin. Ten years, uh, and around six or seven years ago, there was a major case called Pride Father, and people went to prison because they used physical force to obtain the get. If you remember, it was a phony get, it was a setup, it was a sting. Now, what happened after that? The FBI went, they went to a lot of rabbis, hush of the names, which I don't have to name. And the rabbis, the rabbis who were involved in this got very scared, and guess what? Nobody was beating up anybody anymore. You know why? Because the government stepped in. So we stopped that form of coercion. And there was serious shyness of the gittin that were given in those days of beating up. If, if they're kosher or this Asian session, I'm saying, we're not going to get into that. It's not my, I'm not the place. Okay? Now, what happened now? Now what happened is as follows. A rabbi in the Syrian community, community who is a tremendous darshan, a very sweet person, uh, beautiful. I'm not going to mention his name here. People who want to hear it, they can hear it on my radio program. My radio program, I mention names. So this rabbi has a cousin. And this cousin was uh, not getting to get for a few years. So the rabbi put in the Sparta community news, encouraging demonstrations against, against the person. And there were very vicious demonstrations with throwing eggs and with screaming and yelling and cursing and, and tying up the phone lines of his parents so they can't do business and this and that and that. There was a threat with a gun. One of the Hevra, one of the Sephardic Hevra had a gun and he threatened the husband also. Okay? And the husband has different papers, etc., etc., that he was not Mukhif to give a get. He was, they were not the but they did, whatever it is. So they, 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 the pressure was so great that he gave a get. So then the, the whole thing went out on the internet, and now people are very excited because people feel they're doing God's work. The world, the, the, way, the pathway to hell is paved with good intentions. People really think, because they don't know who is getting, the Amaratsam, some of the people who are leading these things, cursing and screaming and yelling, you see the nipple pen, these are the people leading, you're judged by the leadership. So to make a long story short, there have now been two other getting in this thing. Now I personally ascertained that the top Dayan in the whole Syrian community told me without in, incontrovertible, these are get mo'osa, these are called coerced gets. And he told me that one of the biggest Sephardic gedolim there are, you know, in the Sephardic community today in America said the same thing. But neither of these people have come out publicly. Why? Because you have these other Syrian rabbis who are very popular. One of them raises maybe a half a million dollars that he gives out to Douglas just on Purim. The other one's a tremendous speaker, etc., etc. They don't know the halachas of Gittin. Let me, let me tell you halacha. The halacha is like this. A man has to give a get from his own free will. So the Rambam says, kofinoso, in certain cases, not in every case, but in certain cases, kofinoso, achiyamarotzini. Everybody knows to quote that Rabbah. We force him until, because he really wants to do it. There's only one problem. The Shulchan Aruch, even the Beis Yosef, that usually rules like the Rambam, doesn't rule him. So not the Ramah and not the Beis Yosef agree with the Rambam. So there has to be more extenuating circumstances besides that. So now comes along Rabbeinu Tam. And, and they say, what if a person paskins chayev legarsha? You must give a get. It's obligatory. It falls under the few categories in the Gemara that say you have to give a get. And this guy doesn't want to give it. So you don't do kaifan, I say. Ben Tam will not agree with kfir. So here's the question. We're between a rock and a hard place. If you're not allowed to force, what do you do even to, to, um, to accomplish the psak of the Bezin of chayev legarsha? So they came up with something called Harchokas Rabbeinu Tam. Harchokas Rabbeinu Tam is harchik, to stay away. Rabbeinu Tam says, you, you, you don't include him in the minion. You don't do business with him. You don't say hello to him in the street. You don't invite him to your house for Shabbos. Okay, okay but, but listen, listen, it's not that strong, boy. Rabbeinu Tam says, you're not allowed to say, you know why we're doing this? Because you don't give a get. You're not allowed to say that. You're not allowed to say the words. If you do, it's considered you're forcing the person to give a get. Even saying it. Rabbi Natham says you have to do this 
the Hipparit, stay away from him, but you can't tell him, I'm doing this until you give a get. You're not even allowed to say that. That's Ravena Tam. That's how far we are away from the Rambam's sack of Kaif and Isa Yashiyama writes, I mean. Now listen to this, listen to this. Comes along the Paiskim, and they say like this. They ask Ravena Tam, you're living in a little town in Poland. Everybody knows, Chayim Yankel and Moshe Dov is not giving you a get to all staying away from him. So what kind of a game is this? Even if you didn't say it's a de facto coercion. You hear the question? So you know what the Paiskim say? No, that's okay. You know why? Because he could pick himself up and he could move to Krakow or Lemberg or somebody else where they don't know him, somewhere else. And therefore, it's not considered rising to the level of coercion that we didn't validate the game, even though everybody knows the reason, as long as it's not spoken. <laughs> Says people like Rosh Sternbach and many other Poiskim that today, when we're in a global village, the Hachokas of Reign Town don't even apply because... Everybody knows everything. If a guy moves to Israel, a guy knows here, a guy knows here. We know all the molesters who run to Israel, who do this, who do that. We know. Today, it's instant communication. Okay. So I'm not saying that there aren't situations, but they're far and few between. This new thing that replaces Prodfather is now the gangs, the equivalent of the, the, the Jewish Black Lives Matter type thing. We're going to act like thugs. We're going to scream. We're going to yell. We're going to try to close out his business. We're going to threaten. We're going to this and that, and et cetera, et cetera. That's the problem that we're dealing with now. This is the background. Now, do women have legitimate complaints? So I want to answer this question. The woman says, listen, I can't, I can't stand it anymore. He's uncouth. I'm much more genteel than him. I'm nice. He's not, he doesn't have patience for the kids. He doesn't die for the babies. He's, he, he, he's not helpful around the house. She has a legitimate list of complaints. So there is a halacha called mo'us olai. He's, I'm disgusted. He's disgusting to me. The mo'us olai of the Gemara is almost a physical thing. She can't stand to be with him physically. Now, they extend it and they elasticize the most lie. That means, it, now it means, because we're big psychologists, and that means she doesn't like them, this and that. The most lie today is, I don't like chocolate, I like vanilla. He does all these things that I listed. That doesn't rise to the level. So now you come back and you say, Yehuda, listen to me. You want this lady for the rest of her life to have to suffer like this? She doesn't like the guy anymore. She fell out of love with him. She was ripped off. She was gypped. It's not fair. So I want to I want to try to answer that. There's no simple solutions. A child is born with a club foot. A child is born God forbid with leukemia. A person is has a bad muscle, and for the rest of his life he struggles to make panosa. He has to come from Eretz Yisrael for ten kids to collect money for uh, for chasnas and everything. Okay, God has chesbonus. I don't know what the chesbonus are, but do we believe? Then when the Gemara says that 40 days before a child is born or whatever, or conceived, a Baskal says so-and-so is going to marry so-and-so. Do we believe that God has a cheshman for things? We just went through the tragedy of Moron and everybody's saying God has a cheshman. Why doesn't God have a cheshman with all these people who are getting married? All of a sudden God doesn't have a cheshman. All of a sudden God doesn't, we know better than God. The mad Syrian mob that's now increased to not only Syrians, but a lot of people who some of them have problems in their own life that to get away from that, they want to feel they're doing something good, they break up somebody else's family and screaming and yelling like the lowest crest common denominator. That's, that's their do-gooder thing. So the, the point over here is, excuse me for talking like this. I'm allowed to talk like this because I saw a video of Rabbi Leaf and Rabbi Leaf was sitting giving a shir and he started to sing a Kratzmach and then he said, what do you want from me? I'm, I'm an American boy. It was very sweet, very cute. I believe it was very down to earth. So I'm glad to say it because he put it, it was on the video. You're going to so stop singing say, Christmas songs now? What? Stop I'm not going to sing Christmas songs now. I'm going to use a, a Christological term. <laughs> By the Goyim, when they say in the Soyen, they say it's his cross to bear. Everything is the cross. You understand? It's his cross to bear. So I would say, listen. Some people, poverty is their cross to bear. Excuse me for talking like that. I mean, I'm just saying, it's their Nisoy, it's their challenge. I'm using it in a secular sense. Their challenge is, their challenge is to make do, to really work in Shalom Bias. And you want to know it's hard to work in Shalom Bias. Because today, just like there's a pervasive feminism in the secular world and in the world of psychology, and there's 
you feel good, you have to feel good, you have to put yourself before your children, before your family, before your husband, everything else, etc., etc. So the truth is that half or three quarters or maybe even 80 to 90 percent of today's psychologists and social workers have been schooled with a feminist twist. You understand that the chance of Shalom bias, when you take something to Shalom bias and you emasculate the man, you emasculate the man, you emasculate, the woman goes in, she just piles on him, piles on him, piles on him. And, and it's all about the man <laughs> begging, 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 and the, and the social worker is busy joining the woman halfway, three quarters of the way. That's not called Shalom bias. That is not called Shalom bias. Shalom bias is ain't the Isha Kesheira El Oyser Baila. A woman should be oyster to her. Does that mean everything? She's not a shivcha. There's a balance. But we're way to the extreme left. What are we leaving as a legacy? What are we leaving as a legacy? And why is it that when you go to an Aguda convention, they talk about this, they talk about that. I don't even know when they talk about it, if anything improves. But it's like the elephant in the room is the dissolution of the Jewish family. Did I tell you 30 years ago that devout Christians in places like Louisiana and the Deep South realized there was a problem. So they started to make something called covenantial, covenantial marriages. That means not a regular marriage that you can go to court and get a, a no-fault divorce, but it's covenant. That means there's a bris. It's a higher level. So the fact of the matter is marriage by us is called bris nesu. It's a higher level. Chachma bagoyim taimen. We have to believe when the goyim do certain things, they have a chachma. I... When I was running for mayor in 85, it just happened good. I was running for mayor in 85, and I went to the Shiyar Mitzvah Nabah Halacha, Rosh Lein one of the biggest Paiskim, and he wrote me a full handwritten letter. He said, Chilo Hashem is adjudicated, is judged by what the Tovim Shavuot do. If the Gentiles, the best of the Gentiles are doing something good, and we don't do that good, he said, then that's a Chilo Hashem. He was talking about voting for low-life politicians to support abortion and, and all kinds of schmutz. But this applies in every area. The Gentiles understood 30 years ago they have to make covenantal marriages. There's a big problem with no-fault divorce, with this kind of secularization, disposable marriages. We don't understand it. And when was the last time you heard a dress about it? When was the last time you heard that there are bunnim should say on the body, didn't should say, I'm sorry. You have to make shalom bias. It doesn't rise to the level. Go home. If they would do this 50, 60, 70 times, if they would do this 20% of the cases that come before them, instead of issuing ultimately letters, letters, there's no such thing today as a woman should go and not get a letter of some sort. And with that letter, she screams, Aguna. Aguna is not that. Aguna meant when a husband was lost at war or something like that, or, or, he, or, or, or a problem like that. Now, Aguna means anybody who I want to get on demand, they didn't get it. Now, so let's get to Rabbi Gestetner. So that's why people come out against Rabbi Gestetner. They're not coming out against Rabbi Gestetner because of a kin case that started 17 years ago. Rabbi Gestetner was the first one to have the guts and the emes to say in public what those Sephardic leaders told me in private, that I'm testifying, that these are get mo'uses, that they're shal of ish, etc. Rabbi Gestetner said it in public, and he wrote it in the letter, so therefore we have to squelch him because if he proves to be right and the other rabbis start to join him, then we might not have rule, get by the mob rule. So that's why they're going after him. Now Rabbi Gestetner is a right winger and he might seem extreme to some people. And guess what? I'm saying this. He might make a mistake occasionally. Nobody's perfect. A lot of people make mistakes. But if you want to know what breeds Rabbi Gestetner, it's so much of the left leaning stuff. This is a reaction to left wing stuff. We've got to come back to the center. And so far, if I had, God forbid, if I had somebody who I loved, who was close to me, a relative, and he had to go to a Besden, I promise you, I do not know a Besden today that I could trust that is not feminized and will, and will, and will be a Besden that says to people, sometimes you've got to go home because it doesn't rise to the level. And if we don't fix this up, it's going to get worse and worse. And this mob scene is a terrible, terrible thing. But what are the solutions now? What has to be done to fix this mess? So let, let's, let's, let, me, let me make this very clear. I want to say that I believe in proportion that the women are somewhat more right than the men. In other words, I don't think it's really necessarily 50-50. I can understand that 
In other words, there are more uncouth men than there are unrealistic women. But, but I think it might be 60, 40, but whatever it is, but it's not 95%. That's crazy. That's got to stop. So the first thing I said earlier is we have to have de rigor. Nobody should be Masada Kedushin. And a girl should not be able to get just kala classes, but kala classes just about the halachas of Tahara without a three-month course done by professionals, Rabbanim, Rebbezans, the right people. And Chachma Begoyim Taimin, there are certain things that you can take from the Gentiles on this. You should know in good, devout Catholic places, they, they also realize this. And since Catholics don't believe in divorce, really, even though most of them do, do divorce, but according to their religion, they're not allowed to, which is not our religion. But therefore, in, in a lot of devout Catholic places, they have a lot of courses on these things to know how to speak and how to deal with frustration and how to de-escalate. Then there's another idea. The Lubavitchers have a good idea. I'm with them. They have something called the mashpia. That before a Lubavitcher couple gets married, they have a man and woman who are going to be. I believe that Russian Shivas has come to a time now when you see such a pandemic that you say, I'm not going to be a solid condition until A, you do the course, your colleague did the course, and you and her decide in advance not which best thing you're going to go to for a divorce. I'm not talking about prenuptials. Which must be a, a, a husband and wife. I don't care if this has to be paid. I don't care. Let them pass. You could do it from chasna presence, from maisa money. It doesn't matter. But as soon as something starts, it was designated before the marriage. Cool, that okay. should be the prenuptial. That they should go to these people and these people take a Christ. And without that, there shouldn't be any sense of the If there's a will, there's a way. It says in the Pasuk that we say by David from Tilim, Teres Hashem Machim Aspesi. The Torah of Hashem makes the simple person smart. So a, a wag, a, a, a sharp person once said to me, where's the Machkivas Pesi? Why, these are such hard ideas to come up with. You can come up with these ideas. And I heard, um, and, I, 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 and I, I give credit for this, I heard that Rabbi Herschel Shachter said that um, there should be communal but they did Communal but they did means that there should be, but they didn't should be paid from a communal fund with the absolutely none of this business that they have to have their money from Tayan and bringing them business and everything else, and they have to have a reputation. There should be communal, but they didn't set up in every, in every place. And it should be that the people don't have to pay the money or maybe there could be some kind of way that mm. everybody pays a certain amount to the communal bezel, but there's no toanims and their mm. stuff. The whole idea and was that there's no And gears. therefore they could be mm. very, very objective. Right. Okay? And again, these dayanim, the fact that they know how to learn shosh and naga chasapara does not mean necessarily that they themselves, I remember many years ago, Ravik Darilla, my mentor, was summoning me and he was telling me this was in the, the mid-80s, 87 or so, Parnosa, he said a lot of people for years, tens of years, were coming to him for Shalom Bias, and he was getting older, and he wanted me, he want, I promise you, he wanted to send me all the Shalom Bias cases. He said, I'll be good Parnosa, and I'll, I'll get a good reputation, everything else. I said to him, Rebbe, what about my own Shalom Bias? I was 32, 33, I didn't feel competent. Okay? So he started to laugh and this and that, and he told me, whatever he told me, it's not the point. The, 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 the point over here is not everyone, not everyone is roi to sit on this thing. They have to have a sensitivity, they have to have insight in order to do it. The fact that they know Hilchas Kashris or Hilchas this, this is a whole different thing. And by the way, you know who told me this? The young rising uh, dying Rabbi Avi, Avi uh, Khan. Avi Khan told me. He says, a lot of these things, he said, the, what they did today don't really sit. They don't have the patience. They don't want to get into the real long-term solution of the Shalom Bias thing. And this is a big problem. So we've got to have the right types of people with the right types of training. Dayona, but with the right types of training. Working with people who are psychologists and Shalom Bias who are not feminists, who are not busy telling the women, no, your feelings, your fulfillment, your life. The people, you judge a movement, you judge a movement by its leadership. So there's this guy, he's very proud of himself, he calls himself, he's all over the internet, he calls himself Mexican Pacino, a Sephardi guy. There are different things of him cursing and screaming and yelling and threatening. He means nice, etc., etc., but he's, he's an Amoritz in Halacha, and, and he's 
riling up the crowd, and then you have the female version. She puts out a video, Flatbush Mama puts out a video, I call her Flatbush Mama because she's not a girl, she's in her 30s, shame on her, she's the mother of children, she's not a girl, this is part of her psychological problem, she's not a girl, okay, she's a, a mama, and she wanted to be the mama of all politics, and she fell on her face, she got 400 votes when she was running for district leader, or whatever it was, but she's a very ambitious person, and she put out a video a few months ago, which I'm happy to say that I recirculated it in the last two weeks and it really picked up, in which he says, I wouldn't allow myself, I would just go on with life, etc., etc. How are people I will be an Aishish ish, I will be a Zaina, I will be Mazana. That's what she was saying. That's what, yeah, she, she said it in her own video. Words. Right. It's disgusting. And for people to associate with her, then you have a video of her with another winner. You have this woman, Amber Adler who is an alien to our community standards and values, who already a year ago, or something like that in an interview, said she's pro-abortion. <clears throat> okay, this is her family values, who drags her kids all over to the black community, the Pakistani community, everywhere else. She throws these two, two kids like um, like the window dressing, schleps them all over, has them giving out literature, which is not the right thing for a mother to do with kids that age. She's super ambitious, very nice, etc. And she's running for political office. The problem is that she has alienated the kids. She does not let the kids speak over the phone to the father who's stuck for 10 years in Canada because of green card visa problems. A woman like that, a woman who is so ambitious and screaming and ranting and raving in a partnership with Flatbush Mom, it's on the video, that, that uh, I'm going to make laws against this and the, the, the men and this and that. This is not Yiddishkeit. First, she should go, she's an alien. First, she should go and learn, learn Torah, learn values. But she's not. She shouldn't be a leader of anything. She should let her children speak to their father. That's the Torah requirement. And shame on the best of America because they had a, she had a feminist lawyer that coerced the best of America to back off and not allow the children, or, or I say not enforce that the children should speak to the father. This is outrageous, and I, I, I want to urge people, we vote for this kind of a thing. This is like voting for Flatbush Mama or AOC. This is AOC Jewish style, these people. We don't need this now. We have enough problems with the breakdown of family values.